In this two-part series on the Palmetto Trail, I am back for my annual six-day, 130-mile section hike in my quest to complete all 500 miles and 31 passages, including all of the road connectors. Part one of this year's section hike will pick back up where I left off last year at the Newberry Police Department and will include the NRE, Glen Springs, and Blackstock Battlefield passages, as well as the first half of Croft Passage. Part two will showcase the last half of Croft, Cedar Springs, Hub City, USC Upstate, and the Peach Country passages. Links to part two and my previous two years of section hikes from Awendaw Passage to the Newberry Passage can all be found in the description box below. Thanks for coming along and joining me for this week-long adventure on the beautiful Palmetto Trail. Looking for a suitable spot to hang my resupply bag. Hmm, it's a little difficult in the pines. There's no hardwoods with normal branches. All right, we're here in Newberry at the police department where I left off last year with Leonidas. And this is my shuttle driver, Rick. Really helped me out this year. He came and picked me up in Landrum. And I think we were 35 miles down the road and I remembered that I left my GoPro camera that I'm filming with right now in my truck. So we had to turn around and go all the way back to Landrum. So this turned out to be a pretty long afternoon of shuttle driving, hanging a resupply bag, but we're finally here. It's 5.30 and I'm ready to get on the road and finish the remaining part of the Newberry Passage that I left off on last year. So just wanted to thank Rick for uh, bringing me down here. Really appreciate it, man. It was great meeting you. We had a good time, lots of good chatting along the way. So, and he's a big kayaker, so we might be meeting up again in the future for a kayak camping trip. You never know. There goes my shuttle driver, and I'm here at the Newberry Police Department. Heading down the sidewalk, got about uh, three miles at least to get out of Newberry and hopefully find some woods to set up a stealth camp in. Just about out of Newberry here. It's almost six o'clock. It's gonna get dark quick. I noticed that the peeper frogs are out already. Spring is just around the corner. Hey, what do you know? A Palmetto trail sign. All right, we're leaving Newberry. Good seeing you again, Newberry. Finally out of town and officially in Sumter National Forest. I'm at mile six of 11 of the Newberry Passage. So I am on the lookout for a stealth camp. Crossing I-26, I've decided to push on to the end of the Newberry Passage. Just two more miles to go to the trailhead of the Honoree, Honoree Passage, however you say it. All right, we are officially off the roads, at least the asphalt. And now we're on some kind of gravel road. Just about a mile, mile and a half to Honoree, Honoree, Honoree Passage. I need to figure out how to say that correctly. All right, I made it here to the end of the Newberry Passage where it joins up to the Ennery Passage. And you can hear the peeper frogs. They are out in full force. All right, I'm gonna get camp set up and I'll see you guys in the morning, bright and early. Good night. Good morning. It's about 45 degrees here on day two at the beginning of the Ennery Passage. Just enjoying my morning coffee and some breakfast skillet, mountain house breakfast skillet, and then we'll be hitting the trail. Today's weather is calling for clear blue skies and 55 to 60 degrees. Perfect winter South Carolina hiking. Breakfast skillets are pretty good. Eggs and sausage, onions and peppers. Now just let that rehydrate for about 10 minutes and we're good to go. So even though I did 
seven and a half miles last night, it was all on roads and uh, gravel forest roads. So I don't know what to expect on the trails. They have been in uh, flood conditions for the last three days. Flood warnings. So it's been raining nonstop for three days. And that's why I planned this trip to start today. Because this is the first clear sunny day and fairly warm. And no rain in the forecast for like four or five days. And today's hiking is all on trails. The Ennery Passage, I th believe, is all trails. Single track trails in the woods. So it'll be interesting to see how wet the trail bed is. We'll find out here soon. All right, finally on the move. Feels good to be back on a single track trail. Oh, we got a boardwalk here. And I can tell by looking around that this whole entire area was basically underwater during that heavy flooding they had a few weeks ago. And you can also see that the water is really brown and murky from the last three days of rain they've had. I will definitely be putting my water filter to the test today. So last night, while I was laying in bed, about 9.30 p.m., a car pulls up, shines its lights right on my tent, 15 feet away, and lays on the horn. And I was starting to drift off, so I was a little bit ticked. And then uh, they rolled their window down and hollered out at me to see if there was somebody in the tent and then asked what I was doing. And it sounded like some local college kids or young adults, I'm not sure, all women, and they asked me if I smoke weed. <laughs> and I said, no, I'm backpacking. And uh, they said, okay, you chill there, we'll go chill over there. And uh, then they left. And then a half hour later, another vehicle pulled up right as I was drifting off around 10 p.m. And I couldn't tell who it was, what kind of vehicle it was, but they pulled on around me and parked about 30 feet away from me, right near the kiosk. And this morning, I couldn't, you know, I couldn't tell if they were getting out or if they were going to come and talk to me or anything because it was so windy and the peeper frogs were so loud, so I couldn't hear anything. They never, no one ever approached me, so I finally drifted off to sleep. And then this morning, I look out and then it's a, it's like a sprinter van, like someone just uh, trying to find a place to sleep for the night in their, in their like a van life type van. So I'm eating my breakfast this morning, getting ready to tear down camp, and the guy gets out with his dog. And you know, I say good morning and all that. And uh, we start chatting a little bit. And I see him get his GoPro out. So I asked him if he was a YouTuber. And he said, yes, we're Josh and Kelly. So that was pretty uh, a crazy encounter there in the middle of nowhere outside of Newberry, way back in a, uh, on a dead end road to meet two YouTubers, Josh and Kelly. Uh, they're kind of doing the van life thing. They're from Delaware. And they just came from Lido Beach, Sarasota. And now they're heading to Charleston today. And we chatted for a few minutes, talking about YouTube and travels and all that kind of thing. And we, we filmed each other, just briefly introducing each other. And wouldn't you know it, my GoPro was still on time lapse from when I broke down into my camp. And I didn't realize it. So I don't have any of our one minute conversation on film. Here's the time-lapse footage of us talking, <laughs> but you can't hear any audio on time-lapse, unfortunately. So sorry about that, Josh and Kelly. Um, it was really nice meeting you. If you happen to be watching this, had a great time chatting with you and have safe travels down to Charleston today and on your way home to Delaware. Oh, and thanks for the water. Greatly appreciated. This is my favorite kind of hiking right here. Pine Duff. Just, it's just perfect. This is so pleasant. It's about 50 degrees, clear blue sky, a slight breeze. It is a little breezy to fly the drone. I mean, I have it with me and I plan on flying it a lot over the next five days. 
But uh, with these wind gusts we're having up high, probably have to do some low flights. Oh, check this out. It's like a little pine tunnel. Darn, this might be the end of the road for dry feet. I'm gonna try to get around over there. It ain't gonna happen that way. I think I can keep dry. So far, so good. You can see that raging creek. It has obviously spilled its banks, but finally receded enough to get through. Unfortunately, there was no good way around. And that water is cold. A little colder than Florida water. Currently at mile 14.3 and I'm out of water. This is Headley Creek and it's my last opportunity to get water before getting to Brick House Wreck Area and Campground at mile 16. And there's no water. Only thing they have there are vault toilets. So I'll show you the campground when we get there. But I think I better filter some of this water because I don't know how long it's gonna be until I get a, a good water source. So. This is the Platypus Quick Draw. Screws right onto a smart water bottle or a life water. And it's not as dirty as I thought. It just looks really muddy, but once you put it in a bottle, it's not really that bad. Since I didn't bring my squeeze bag, which I normally don't anyway, but this is just gonna have to be my dirty water bottle from now on. And I'll just leave the uh, water filter screwed onto it so I don't forget. I don't know if you can see that. That's pure crystal clear water coming out of there. Isn't that amazing? And then you have to let some air back in every now and then. Hopefully it tastes as good as it looks. All right, here we are at mile 16. Trail continues on that way. And right up here is Brick House Wreck Area and Campground. You can see the vault toilet. I'm on the lookout for a picnic table. I'm gonna take a load off and eat lunch. Pretty nice wreck area. There's the trail right there. Nice picnic tables and fire rings. And it looks like it's completely vacant. These look like, uh... oh, just trash cans. I thought they were uh, bear proof food lockers, but I guess not. All right, let's find a good picnic table in the sun and dry some stuff out. All right, on the menu for lunch, the same thing I had at Fort Jackson base last month. I had three of them in my arsenal, so I brought the vanilla chai this time. So I just put uh, 16 ounces of water in, shake it up, and I'll be gulping that down in a minute. But this is what I'm really looking forward to trying tonight. Stowaway Gourmet Bison Beer Black Bean Chili. This came highly recommended by one of my friends, John Kelly. He raves about it. And I can't wait to try it.
that's pretty good. I like these things. I don't like that they weigh 5.9 ounces. When you're going ultralight backpacking, that's just a little heavy. But at 700 calories, that's quite a bit. Yeah, not bad. I'm glad I tried them. It's nice to be able to just gulp down your lunch instead of having to break out the stove and cook something and rehydrate it. I don't mind doing that for breakfast and dinner when I'm on a leisurely backpacking trip like this, but I still don't like to do it three times. It's just too much. I like to take a quick 10 minute break for lunch, gulp something down and get back on the trail. Well, that was a nice little break at the campground, but time to get back on the move. I want to try to get at least six more miles in before I call it quits today. I'll probably go till somewhere between four and five o'clock. That way I got plenty of daylight to find a good place to pitch my tent and get some dinner cooked before nightfall sets in. So I have a little bit of bad news. I was flying my drone back there at the campground because I wanted to try to fly at least once a day to kind of show some of the trail I'm hiking on. And I was bringing it back down um, on, I was staying on the road in the campground and it, I thought I had cleared the branch completely and I hit a pine tree branch and it killed it and then I thought it was going to stay, stay stuck up there and then it fell and it was directly underneath it so I'm looking up and I was trying to catch it I had my arms out and trying to catch it and it was kind of spinning as it fell and I, I caught part of it in my hand but it bounced off my hand and smacked on the ground and broke the gimbal for the camera and one of the arms so Unfortunately, no drone footage for the rest of this hike. Just hit 20 miles, and it's quarter after four, a little later than I expected. So I'll probably just go for another 45 minutes to an hour. That should give me time to find camp, find water, cook dinner, all that good stuff before it gets dark. Um, I think there's something called the beaver ponds at mile 22 or 23. So. If there's no water beyond that, or if the, if the next reliable water source is too far beyond that, I'll probably stop there for the night. Well, I'm at the beaver ponds earlier than I expected. That's what this is. Kind of a big marshy bog with a um, walkway over it. This is too early. I don't want to stop right now. It's like 4.30. Plenty of sunlight, whew, and it's bright. Um, it looks like there's more water in about two and a half to three miles. There's a couple bridge crossings. So I think I'm gonna go for that. Hopefully it's uh, halfway decent water. Well, it feels good to be here at camp. Ended up getting exactly 25 miles. I was looking for a campsite from mile 23 and a half till here, pretty hard. But I was down real low by a creek and I hate camping in low spots because it's cooler and I get a lot of condensation in here on this single wall tent. So I try to avoid low spots. But I'm not very high either. I'm kind of middle of the road. I was hoping to be up a little bit higher and get a cell signal because I have no service here. I was hoping to browse my phone a little bit, but that's all right. Um, I'll just get a good night's sleep and be ready to hit the trail bright and early tomorrow morning because we have another big day of at least 25 miles. Heating up some water for my Stowaway Gourmet. Get some light on it. Stowaway Gourmet Bison Beer Black Bean Chili. And it looks like my fire's going out. Didn't put enough alcohol in. And for the appetizer, Sushi Chef White Miso Soup. I love this stuff. Boy, this stuff smells fantastic. Let's try it out. Oh yeah, that's good. Well, thanks for watching today, guys, and I will see you bright and early tomorrow morning. Good night. Good morning. I got on the move pretty early this morning, 7 a.m. So I got up at quarter after six and just packed everything up and hit the trail at 7 a.m. because I was freezing. It frosted last night. 
it's not there's not a visible frost out but the inside of my tent and the outside had frost on it did not well i did know it was going to get down to low 30s one or two nights while i was out here but i didn't think it was last night and i couldn't check my phone because like i mentioned last night i didn't have a signal so uh, if i just would have walked a half mile further i would have been up a, a little higher area with some decent camping spots but sometimes you just don't know it's gonna be a clear blue sky today again i can see the sun there it is the sun is just about ready to come up over the trees and warm me up so i've been looking for a good spot with uh some down logs like this for breakfast so i don't have to kneel down and do everything on the ground so it's breakfast time about three and a half miles in and the sun is up and it's feeling glorious i haven't had my morning coffee yet we're gonna have some nescafe taster's choice french roast and a brand another brand new meal from pinnacle foods breakfast sausage and egg scramble with peppers onions and rosemary roasted potatoes now that sounds good This is fantastic. Highly recommend Pinnacle Foods breakfast sausage and egg scramble. Outstanding. Definitely hits the spot on this chilly morning. There's a close look at it. You can see a lot of red peppers and onions in there. Chunks of sausage. The egg scramble is um, definitely chopped up way more than most other skillets. I don't know if you can see in there very well. But you can see how the eggs are kind of pulverized. And uh, Mountain House meals are great big chunks. I kind of like this better. A lot of boardwalks around here. I sure am glad for them. Wouldn't be fun trying to navigate your way through that slop. This Ennery, I still don't know if it's pronounced Ennery or Honorary. I've always said Honorary. Either way, it's pretty secluded out here. You cross some forest roads a few times and you come out onto a, like a township road or county road a couple times, but for the most part, you're out in the bush pretty deep. And I can't hear any traffic right now. So that's pretty awesome. I must be pretty far away from I-26 finally. Yeah, no sounds of traffic. And this passage is 37 miles, something like that. And I got about seven left on it. And then after these 38 miles, I have about a eight mile road walk to Blackstock Battlefield Monument area. It's a real small passage of like a mile and a half or less. And that is where my food bag is hidden. So. I don't really need it until tomorrow because I'm about 10 or 11 miles ahead of schedule. But uh, I have a feeling we're gonna make it there today and maybe even continue on beyond that a few miles. This is a pretty large bridge. Wow, crossing a pretty massive river. I don't know which river it is. I'll do my best to throw it up on the screen right now if I can figure it out. All right, onward. A really nice new section of boardwalk. I'm guessing during their floods they had last month, this was all ruined. And here's the remnants of the repairs. That's quite a pile. Man, I love these Palmetto Trail signs. 
they're like aluminum or some kind of metal and they're screwed on I want to get me one of those if anyone knows where I can get one please let me know maybe one of the trail coordinators can help me out welcome to Macedonia Lake I got five and a half miles left on the NRE passage and then I'll be jumping on the road walk to the battlefield. It has certainly warmed up quite a bit. As you can see, I'm in t-shirt and shorts currently. And I'm guessing it's already mid to low 50s. It feels nice. When you're moving, it feels closer to 70. Oh, just a beautiful day out here on the Palmetto Trail. Really enjoying myself. This is what I really enjoy about the Palmetto Trail. The pine duff, the pine trees. And I actually enjoy the lack of elevation change. We've had a little bit on the Ennery Passage, but well, I'm on the Palmetto Trail, you know, I know I'm gonna get a lot of flat, easy trails, and I'm enjoying it. Next up, Sedalia Campground for a lunch break and a water refill. Welcome to Sedalia Lake. Another very murky lake, but still very beautiful. I think we got about two and a half miles or so to Sedalia Campground. Let's go check out the campground now. I'm assuming this is another section of Sedalia Lake. It's a nice little uh, dock area. Getting pretty close to the campground. And I believe there's water, bathrooms. I don't know about power. Power would be nice to charge up some devices. Cool place to hang out if you're camping at the Sedalia Campground. Just about to Sedalia Campground. I think the entrance is right up ahead here, less than a half mile. But I was just observing the sky and how blue it is. Take a look. That is beautiful. Not a cloud to be seen. I think the entrance to the campground is right up here to the right. All right, we made it to Sedalia Campground. Let's go find us some water and a bathroom. So it looks like, according to the sign, this campground is currently closed, but there's a parking area for the Palmetto Trail. Here's a vault toilet that is open, and I believe we have water. Yes. All right, for lunch, once again, I am having another rec pack. This is my final one. This is the coffee flavored. I'll let you know how it is. All right, heading out of Sedalia Campground, right there behind me, and starting the eight mile road walk to Blackstock Battlefield. So I'm not sure where I'm going to end for the day. Um, I got this eight mile road walk to Blackstock Passage, Battlefield Passage. Uh, I should get there in about two and a half hours. And it's only quarter after one right now. So I'll have plenty of time to do the 1.3 mile Blackstock Battlefield Passage. And I may hunker down there if I'm tired or I could get a start on the 11 mile road walk to Glen Springs Passage. I think that's the next one on the list. So we will see, we'll see how I feel 
after doing the Black Sock Passage. But for now, we're just gonna make some good time on this road. Unfortunately, no more quiet back roads. I'm currently on State Route 49 and it has been busy. I've been waiting for a quiet moment to get my camera out. I got about four miles on this, give or take, through Cross Keys. That's a little village I can see on my maps. Um, and then we'll be turning, heading north up to Blackstock. Things have been going pretty good, no complaints. Um, I did receive a bottle of water from one of the South Carolina state workers who drove by. He uh, backed up and hollered at me out the window and said, hey, you need some water? So I'm carrying it along with me. It was much appreciated. Every once in a while, it's peaceful out here. Currently no traffic, but it has been nonstop. Hey, what do you know? My first daffodils of the trip. Making a little progress. We're currently halfway through this road walk on 49. I'm looking forward to getting off the road because my feet are starting to hurt a little bit. I forgot to mention what my opinion was of that coffee flavored rec pack uh, lunch that I had at Sedalia Campground. It was pretty good. Uh, probably one of my favorites of the three that I had. I, I just don't know if I want to try them out again because they are a little bit heavy but I do really like the ease and quickness of chugging that down for a lunch. And the other thing is I always feel just slightly queasy after having those. And it could be a coincidence that I'm just hiking lots of miles. Sometimes I will get a little distressed stomach during ultra races or really long backpacking trips. So it's hard to tell which is causing it. We've got a pretty good breeze. I'm hoping this puffy mic on here is... We've got a pretty good breeze right now. I'm hoping this mic with a puffy on it is blocking that wind pretty good. Sometimes you don't know until you get home and watch the footage. Just hit 20 miles. I think we got about three more to Blackstock Battlefield. I bet that's where we're going. That should be our turnoff on the Blackstock Road. Finally, Blackstock Battlefield to the right. Oh, Blackstock Road. Unfortunately, we still have a little bit of a walk to get to the Battlefield Monument. Um, I obviously miscalculated somehow when I was sitting at my desk looking at Google Maps because this is just about eight miles right here, about 7.8. And I bet you we still have a couple miles down Blackstock Road. But here's a sign, historical marker sign about the Battle of Blackstock. Oh my goodness, I just looked it up. 2.6 miles away. Oh, I mean, that's fine. I got plenty of daylight, but uh, Blackstock Battlefield Passage will definitely be my stopping point today after I do the the actual 1.3 mile passage. So it's gonna I'm gonna be at 25 miles when I reach the passage plus 1.3 so it's gonna be over a 26 mile day. What a beautiful walk down to the Blackstock Battlefield Passage. Lined with pines on both sides. That's gorgeous. Looks like we got a lot of private property on our right and a game preserve on our left. It still says no trespassing, hunting, or fishing. We're on our final mile. Oh, finally, we made it to the trailhead parking area for Blackstock Battlefield Passage. And I haven't even looked at my map real close to see where this passage goes. I don't know, it looks like it might go up in there. But top priority right now is to go recover my food bag. 
about 50 yards into the woods here. Whenever I do like six day trips, I like to split the food up in half so I don't have to carry that much weight. And if this food bag got torn into by squirrels or something, this trip will be over tomorrow. Oh, I see it. It looks like it's still intact. Whew. I wasn't worried about bear getting to it because it's up high enough, but you never know. Squirrels and raccoon can get just about anywhere. There she is. All right, so there's the kiosk and the parking area. There's a closed gate right there that's 0.3 away from the monument. And the passage, you can go that way or that way. It's a loop, 1.3 miles. Let's go this way. I took off my pack, hit it up there in the woods with my resupply bag of food, and I have one bottle of full water left over from Sedalia, but this one's empty. So I'm hopeful we can find a water source somewhere around this loop. Otherwise it's gonna be uh, very close to whether I can make it through the night. I won't have enough to cook breakfast, coffee or anything or oatmeal, but at least I'll be able to get through tonight with the one bottle if I can't get this one filled. It's currently 20 after four. So I got a good hour and a half before sunset. That's plenty of time to get around this 1.3 miles and find a campsite and get set up while there's still a little sunlight. So that's the plan. Found me a good water source, just a half mile in. Water crisis adverted. So that little river I just got water out of is right over there. It flows into this large one. I think this is the Tiger. Right next to the trail. Just popped out of the woods, probably into the Battlefield Monument area. I'm guessing it's right up here ahead somewhere. Pretty large plot of land to keep mowed. I think I see it up there. So the Palmetto Trail is right along the woods and goes back in the woods right there. And I saw this concrete structure up here, but I thought it was just a dead tree. Yeah, I think this is a monument. You know, with that uh, rough edge on it, from a distance, it just looked like a dead tree. November 20, 1870, near this spot, was fought Battle of Blackstock. Wow. I wish I would have uh, brushed up on the history a little bit before I filmed this. It really is a pretty area. I think we're only three tenths of a mile back to the trailhead. Right at that driveway, but we're gonna take the trail. You know, the one bad thing about these freeze-dried meals is they're so darn expensive. I think mountain houses at Walmart cost 11, 11 and a half bucks. Probably depends on, you know, which Walmart you're at. Uh, they used to be, I remember they used to be six, seven, eight bucks just last year or two years ago. These peak refuel meals, $13.95, I think. And then uh, some of those ones I've had the last couple days and some that are coming for tomorrow and the next day, $15.95. I think I might even have spent $17.95 on one of them. I mean, absolutely ridiculous. So I'm definitely savoring every bite out here in the backcountry. Once again, having miso soup, the perfect salty appetizer before the main course, which is one of my top all-time favorites, peak refuel, beef stroganoff. Stuff is amazing. Starting to get a little dark out there. Just about got a boil. Close enough. Uh, 
And this is the bad thing about cat can stoves, homemade cat can stoves, alcohol stoves. Sometimes you put a little too much fuel in. So all I'm gonna do is put that right back on there and add some more water real quick. And get a jump start on the boiling the next batch for the peak refuel meal. And it looks like it's sputtering and just about out. Man, this white miso soup is so good. Looks like we got a good boil here. Oh yeah. So this only calls for uh, six ounces. I put in nine, eight to nine. I feel like the beef stroganoff from Peak Refuel is off on their measure, their water requirements. that rehydrate for probably 15 minutes. Woo! Fire about got my puffy coat. Seal it up and let her rehydrate. Most of them say like 10 minutes, but I usually go 15 or 20 just to really rehydrate the meat well. Sometimes meat stays a little bit hard. Not really crunchy, but chewy and hard unless you overhydrate it. Unless you uh, let it set a little longer than they recommend. So if you were wondering how I measure this fuel, by the way, this container works great because I like that little twist top. Um, trying to get the light right. I can uh, squirt it right into the felt to help prime the stove, that carbon felt around the outside. So I use this little cap. This is like the cap for a hairspray bottle, I believe. See how small that is? So I squirt my um, alcohol, which is denatured alcohol, into this little cap and pour it right in inside the stove. I'll be sure to show this tomorrow. So I know about two of these, actually one and a half, will boil a cup. If it's a hair more than a cup, I'll put at least two in. And then I'll take this bottle and I'll also squirt just a couple drops around the rim to help it get started quicker. Otherwise, you gotta wait for the fuel to get wicked up by the carbon felt. Does a really good job. I'm pretty happy with the cat can stove. But like I said, I also use a canister stove, the BRS 3000. It's just nice to use this sometimes. Here's the beef stroganoff. And you can see, it's perfect consistency. I almost would have preferred another ounce of water. Can you imagine having six ounces in there instead of nine it'd be it would be like sludge gosh this stuff is so good I'll give you another look at it peak refuel beef stroganoff mm -mm. can't go wrong with this one good morning Chipping away at this 11-mile uh, walk to the Glen Springs Passage. I have about nine to go. And then I'll hop on a Glen Springs Passage, which is 7.3 miles, I believe. And then on to the Croft Passage. And I'll see how I feel at Croft State Park Campground. But I believe that's going to be too early. That will be close to 20 miles for the day. But... If it's only like three o'clock, I'll probably continue on and knock out three or four or five more miles in the Croft Passage, but we'll see. Well, I am leaving the quiet road of Blackstock Road and on to Highway 56 for the next eight and a half to nine miles. And it's gonna be busy, I bet. Currently crossing the mighty Tiger River. And I was looking down there and noticed the old bridge from years and years ago. Man, it is shaping up to be another fantastic day. Check out that fence. Not only do they have the regular chain link fence with the, the, the razor wire at the top, they have this 40 foot perimeter fence 
all the way around it, as far as the eye can see. That'll definitely keep the prisoners in. I'm assuming that's what it is, a prison. I'll know here in a second when I see the sign. Yep, Tiger River Correctional Institution. Well, I'm currently halfway through this road walk, heading towards the Glen Springs Passage. I'm making good time. And it's starting to warm up, feels good. My brother would love this place. There must be 20 or 30 boats here, if not more. Currently on my final mile and a half to the Glen Springs Passage. And as you can see, this has been a delight to walk along. I'm able to get off the road and walk in these nice grassy tree-lined sections. I'm on the lookout for Stagecoach Road. And then I think it's about a half mile down that road to the trailhead for the southern end of Glen Springs Passage. Finally, we made it to our turnoff. I'm glad to see that sign. Just a little further to Glen Springs. I was just about out of water. And it doesn't look like the best water source, but it tasted fine, it smelled fine, so I went ahead and filtered some. Because I don't know how long it's going to be before I find water in Glen Springs. And I'm ready to eat some lunch. I think I might even make a cup of coffee. I skipped it this morning. And that sounds really good. Well, we should be walking into the Glen Springs Passage any moment. Alright, here we are. To the entrance of the Glen Springs Passage. And it's very difficult to see from the road. There's no pull-off or trailhead parking of any kind. This would be very easy to miss, and I don't really see a place that you could park. Hmm. I guess you get dropped off and start walking unless you walk here on the roads like I did. All right, let's do it. All right, lunch break time. I'm actually going to sit down and take a load off on my chair, dig into my food bag, and this is where I'm going to cook my lunch and my coffee. I'm whooped. Whew, feels good to sit down for a little bit. That road kind of took it out of me. 12.2 miles in. I'm just a mile in on the Glen Springs, not even a mile. So we've got about six, six and a half miles left on this passage. And then we'll be in to Croft. And looking forward to stopping for another break at Croft State Park to charge some batteries up and my power bank, give it a little more juice before continuing on. On the menu for lunch, another new one from Pinnacle Foods. Thai peanut curry and rice noodles. That sounds pretty good right now. Got me a nice little tidy spot right down inside this tree. Out of the wind. There we go. This looks really good. A lot of big chunks of veggies in there. Here's a look at how it turned out. Lots of roasted vegetables in there, rice noodles, edamame. It's good stuff. Back on the move. That was a long lunch break. Probably 35, 40 minutes, way longer than I wanted to take, but I needed it. I feel refreshed and we're ready for some more hiking. Got three miles left of the Glen Springs Passage and I just entered a bamboo forest. Pretty cool. I don't think it's uh, native to this area. Probably an invasive tree that 
took over. Wow, just look at that. There's old dead bamboo everywhere. Pretty interesting. Oh, we got the posse coming. Hey, buddy. You be a good dog. Seven dogs. <laughs> they always like to come up behind you and sniff you. And it seems like they're gonna come and bite you, but they just, they're just they just curious. You're all barking, no bite. Come on, buddy. Come on, go get them. They're all taking turns and getting behind me to sniff me. Got about two and a half miles of road up to Croft State Park and Croft Passage. At least it wasn't all asphalt. These gravel roads are pretty nice. Still feels like you're out in the country. Still beautiful scenery to look at. And very pleasant temperatures. I'm actually feeling pretty warm today. I'm sweating quite a bit and I'm getting really low on water. So I'm definitely gonna tank up at Croft State Park here in a couple miles. Wow, check out this cool gate with wild game. Uh, I bet it's the entrance to a hunt club. All right, we're on our final mile and a half down to Croft. Boy, what a gorgeous piece of property. How would you like to have that as your front yard? Man. All right, this concludes the Glen Springs Passage. Here we are at the beginning of the Croft Passage. Uh, about three-fourths of a mile up to the state park campground, I believe, where I'm going to stop and take a load off for a little bit, plug some devices in, throw some trash away, wash my hands, and just relax. But it's only like 2.30, so I'm not going to stop at Croft State Park. I'm going to continue on and at least knock a few miles out, four, five, six miles, before setting up camp tonight. Pretty nice river. and bridge and I see a rope swing we have arrived to Croft State Park I see some campers up there this is a big equestrian parking area and I think we go that way, but I'm not sure. Let's go find some power and water. Oh, it feels good to sit down and take a load off for a little bit here in this shelter down by the equestrian parking area. Took advantage of that nice bathroom over there, washed up, and been chugging some water, an entire 23 ounce bottle. I'm gonna finish that off and then fill it up again. Um, I probably better look ahead on the maps to see if there's water sources coming up. Because if there's not, I'm going to need to camble up right now and top both my bottles off before hitting the trail so I have enough water to get through the night. Um, it is quarter after three, so time is slipping away quickly. And, I, and I'm at 20 miles exactly right here. It's 20 miles for the day. I'd like to get five more in. So I'm going to hike to at least 4.30, and we'll see where I'm at. I'd like to get about five more miles down trail. So that is the plan. Things are going good. It's been beautiful. There's a nice breeze now. That feels good. So next up, campsite for night three. On the move. Going to be walking out of Cross State Park campground area here in a moment. And I went ahead and cameled up. Not sure if you can see that. I filled both of my bottles. I see a creek in about a half mile. That doesn't do me much good. If I drink some between now and then, I'll top off. Other than that, I'm not seeing any water sources until mile six. I don't think I can make it to mile six. Well, maybe, because I'm already almost one mile in. So maybe I can. That would be good. Correction, it's closer to mile seven and a quarter at Johnson Lake. So there's no way I can make it there. But around mile four and a half, um, there's a little side trail that leads down to a creek. 
So maybe that will be my best camping option for tonight. We'll see. All right, I think I'm ready to call it quits for the day. 24.6 miles. Uh, that's close enough to 25, I'm happy. But I've been pushing hard on this Croft Passage to get about to mile five and a quarter because it's up on top of the ridge. I knew it'd be warmer and drier up there and I might even get a sunset, right? Not only am I gonna get a sunset, I have a flat place to pitch my tent and there's one more perk. Wait till you see this. Now before I show you, I want those of you who are watching that may be thinking, why am I camping in a state park non-designated area? First of all, I don't do campfires, I leave no trace. When I'm pushing long, hard days like this, I end up where I end up. If there's, if it's a stealth camp that might be considered illegal, sometimes you just gotta do what you gotta do. All I'm doing is pitching my tent to lay my head down out of the weather, away from the bugs, get a couple hours of sleep. Well, hopefully nine hours of sleep tonight and then get right back up and keep on moving. All right, here we go. What do you see this? So here's our flat area joins up with another trail that goes along the ridge and I believe the lake is right over that ridge there I'm just glad we got the sunshine for a, another hour at least what is that what a picnic table Woohoo! coming up in the final episode I begin my day by finishing off the Croft Passage and move on to some more road walking through the Cedar Springs Hub City and USC upstate passages as I'm making my way through the Peach Country Passage, I can begin to see the Blue Ridge Mountains come into view, and I'm already getting excited about tackling the final 100 miles. I finally arrive in Landrum and back to my truck with another eight passages and 130 miles completed on the beautiful Palmetto Trail. Ooh.